Neil Ferguson, Hoover Institution Senior Fellow, spoke with Wall Street Week host David Weston yesterday about rising political and geopolitical risk in the U.S. I think you have to take a slightly longer term perspective uh, in order to understand where we are. If you go back maybe to the 1990s, yeah, uh, that period seemed uh, pretty low risk. The Soviet Union had collapsed. And apart from uh, trouble in the Balkans uh, with the breakup of Yugoslavia and uh, some other trouble spots like Somalia, the world by the standards of the rest of the 20th century was pretty peaceful. But if you go back 50 years, uh, imagine we're back in 1974, uh, that was a much more dangerous time than we're living through now. And I speak with uh, some insight as I'm in the midst of writing about that period as I write the second volume of my biography of Henry Kissinger. So we, we have a tendency to judge the present by comparison with the recent past. But the recent past was an interwar period, the period between two Cold Wars. Cold War I ended with the Soviet collapse. And we didn't really notice Cold War II beginning, but I think it really began when Xi Jinping came to power in China. And now Cold War II is uh, in its, I guess, second inning. It has some way still to go. And I don't expect the world to get more peaceful uh, in 2025. It is a commonplace that the markets do not do a particularly good job of discounting, as it were, either political or geopolitical risk. Uh, can we learn from history, some of the things you suggest, and even going back further, can we learn how markets and investors reacted to really unthinkable developments as they happened and use that to inform our investment decisions today? Well, I think we know that markets try to uh, adjust for domestic political risk. We, we know this because there's been some great work done uh, in recent years on the way that in an election year, uh, investors have a tendency to make some allowance for policy uncertainty. And the bigger the difference between the candidates in the United States, the more uncertainty. And we've certainly got uh, a pretty big difference uh, this year, but it's the same difference that we had back in 2020 between uh, Donald Trump and, and Joe Biden. So I think it's not true to say that markets are bad at this. I think we can see in the data that that by and large election years see a certain amount uh, of holding back as we wait to see just how the policy uncertainty will be resolved. And I think the closer we get to November the 5th, the more obvious that's going to become. But I think you're right, David, that when it comes to geopolitical risk, it's actually much harder. Once you've spotted the issue, it's one thing to spot the issue, which is terribly important. What do you do about it as an investor? Because as you suggest, if there really were a conflict of some sort with China, it could shake, I think, the very foundations of the global economy and global financial markets. Without a doubt. I mean, let's remember that the current AI uh, investment boom, the kind of mania that we have seen since OpenAI revealed ChatGPT, uh, assumes that TSMC, uh, the most sophisticated semiconductor manufacturer, will continue to be able to make those things for NVIDIA, and NVIDIA will be able to ship them to the people doing AI. Now, if there were a war over Taiwan, uh, that would immediately be uh, disrupted. Uh, in a case of invasion, there is a very high probability that the TSMC uh, foundries would be destroyed, either by TSMC or by the United States. It's inconceivable that in wartime, TSMC would be able to run smoothly. Uh, nor is it likely that China, if it successfully took over Taiwan, would be able to run TSMC seamlessly. So I think the economic implications of what would be the, the Taiwan semiconductor crisis would be much, much larger than the economic implications of the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Now, that was a very dangerous moment in Cold War I because it was the closest we came to World War III. But what does Cuba export? That's right, David, cigars. Now, some people like cigars, but economically, they're much less important than high-end semiconductors are today. So this would be a kind of Cuban missile crisis with huge geopolitical risk, but also with huge geoeconomic risk. Even before a shot was fired, the news that there was a Taiwan crisis would cause, I think, major economic uh, disruption 